In this series of videos, we're going to be learning about translation, which is the counterpart process to transcription being the second step in the production of a functional protein. So to establish context behind how translation works, we can take a look back at what the goal of transcription is, which of course is the production of a functional mRNA transcript molecule derived of course from a section of DNA that we call a gene. Now once the mRNA transcript has been transcribed properly and spliced, removing all of the non-coding introns from it, and with the exons recombined into the proper form of the mRNA transcript that we need, that mRNA transcript is exported out of the nucleus through structures in the nuclear membrane that we call nuclear pores, which are uh, very simply holes in the nuclear membrane that are large enough in order to pass a large mRNA molecule out of it. And then that mRNA transcript is going to make its way either into the cell's cytoplasm or into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which are the two possible locations of where protein synthesis may occur, because they are the two possible locations that contain the enzymes that are used to read the mRNA transcript and produce a protein from it, which are, of course, your cell's ribosomes. So what exactly are ribosomes and what exactly do they do? Well, ribosomes are, in addition to being a giant enzyme complex, are actually organelles in and of themselves, which are combinations of structural protein that make up the ribosome's 3D structure, as well as a special form of RNA, which is what we call ribosomal RNA, or simply rRNA for short. And ribosomes are particularly interesting among enzymes because we're used to proteins being the structural component of enzymes, but actually it is the rRNA that gives the ribosome its catalytic functions, which is why we call the ribosomes an example of ribozymes, that being an example of RNA that has catalytic function rather than protein. And what reaction does it catalyze exactly? Well, there's actually two different ones. One of these uh, allows the ribosome to physically attach to the mRNA molecule that it is reading, and then as it moves along the mRNA molecule, it reads the information in the mRNA in order to tell it which amino acids to grab onto and which order to combine those amino acids in in order to assemble a fully functional polypeptide which is eventually going to fold and become a mature protein and this process here is the subject of this series of videos but obviously this process is quite complicated and requires a bit of background before we actually look at the mechanism behind how this works. For starters, how do we know which amino acids are supposed to enter the ribosome and attach at specific times? Well, that brings us to a different form of RNA that is used in order to do this exact process, and this is what we call transport RNA, which we can simply call tRNA. So just to keep track of all of the different varieties of RNA that we have, we have messenger RNA, which is the RNA that carries the information from the genetic code, from the DNA in the nucleus, out of the nucleus and eventually to a ribosome, and the ribosome itself is also made of a form of RNA, which is what we call ribosomal RNA, and this, as we've already established, is actually the catalytic part of the ribosome that allows it to do the protein synthesis reaction, which leaves transport RNA that has the job of carrying specific amino acids to the proper order into the ribosome. So the way that a transport RNA molecule works is that at a specific location of the transport RNA, an enzyme is going to join a specific amino acid 
to this location of the transport RNA, and your body generally makes use of 20 different amino acids, which means there will be 20 different tRNA molecules, each one of them specifically attaches to a single amino acid, which it then carries to the ribosome in order to add them to the growing protein uh, and and adds them uh, in specific sequences to the specific protein in order to make sure that the right amino acid goes in the right location. So in conclusion, together, the tRNA or transport RNA that carries the amino acids and the rRNA, the ribosomal RNA that uh, actually catalyzes the reaction, work together with the mRNA that provides the specific sequence or order in, um, in terms of determining what the polypeptide sequence of amino acids is going to be. So together, the transport RNA carrying the amino acids and the ribosomal RNA, the catalyst that reacts them together, used are used together in order to construct the primary structure of a protein. Because here we can see that if this is the N-terminus of the protein and then the C-terminus is here, we can see when we read this sequence of polypeptides or this sequence of amino acids, we have a primary structure that is being assembled here. But again, this requires all three forms of RNA in order to work together in order to produce this structure here. And in the next video, we are going to go into detail about how mRNA works in terms of providing the specific sequence of amino acids that is required in order for the ribosome to know which amino acids to add in a specific order.